Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hello, MJ friends. Hope you're doing well. We're going to look at CGC, WED, APHACB, CRON, TLRY, and OGI, TRST. A lot of them look very similar on the daily time frame when volume and volatility pick up. The correlations within the sector have picked up as well. So very similar standpoints. And it also makes it easy for the names to stand out that aren't correlated and aren't seeing the exact same setups all across the board. So whenever I'm looking for a game plan, I look at the longer term time frames and I establish what my broader perspective is. So with the video last time, I looked into looking for lower highs to form. Speaking of which, thanks for all the comments on the video last time. I did go through and read all 330 of them last night and I will be selecting people tonight for those free courses. So keep an eye out on your YouTube, see if you get a notification of me messaging you and we'll handle that tonight. So CGC, we were looking for daily lower highs. So when we see a strong gap up open after bulls bought the dip all Friday, that tells me bulls are likely going to be exhausted at the open. That tells me I don't want to be entering in a bullish position. A rule of thumb is that gap ups are for profit taking and gap downs are for buying the dip. That's a general rule of thumb. So if we see a gap up day, especially when it's followed by, again, a day that was all bulls buying the dip, we know that the bulls are going to be exhausted as we head into the open. So we did see profit taking on that open with CGC, and we're looking for a lower high on the daily compared to 53.29. Anything under that level is a lower high, at which point we'll look to consolidate and then form a higher low and see a tightening daily range through the week and into next week as we get closer and closer to the mid-October date, October 17th. Another thing to be keeping an eye out for is the S&P 500. The S&P 500, we didn't see a strong correlation to it today, but the S&P 500 is in a daily equilibrium pattern. The tech sector is a daily equilibrium pattern. So that's not the reason I'm looking for these patterns to form on the Canadian MJ sector, but the fact that they are forming across the market definitely makes it more likely and adds to my confidence that that's what we're going to be keeping an eye out for. We also have after hours news of Trump coming out with Trump tariff China plans. That has an impact on the market as well. So people that are swinging overnight are going to be subject to that volatility and have to be aware of these macroeconomic events that could have a potential impact on these little old Canadian MJ companies as well. So we're looking at an hourly equilibrium. We have our high and low of the day was set on our range. So it really happened in the first uh, 30 minutes of trading with our high and our low, our lower high and our higher low, and then another lower high and higher low at the end of the day. So if we look on the 15 minute time frame and zoom in for more details, we can just see tighter and tighter range with the range right now, 47.85 support and 49 resistance. So that is what we are watching on the daily or on the shorter term time frames. We could break pre-market before we get to the open tomorrow on CGC. It's something we're going to keep an eye out for. If we lose the hourly uptrend, the odds that our daily lower high have been set will increase significantly. And that's the case on any ticker and on any sector, on any anything. If you're looking for a daily lower high, lose the hourly higher lows. That's the first indication that the daily lower high has been set. So we're watching the hourly range. We're watching the tight 15-minute range. And we're looking for a break of that. First thing tomorrow morning. Again, if we get a bear break, we're going to pull back and look for a higher low somewhere around the $44, $45 range on this chart. Increasing bear volume would be notable for weakness. WED, same thing, just different levels. If you're looking at multiple tickers, dual listed tickers, if I give the levels for APH and you're playing APH QF, go in and do the levels on your chart. Correspond the levels with the Canadian ticker to the levels of the US ticker. Doing so, will benefit you it will make it easier for you to pick out levels it's just practice so chart it on your own chart and looking at the 15 minute time frame here for wed high of the day low of the day lower high higher low lower high higher low tight range right now 6236 support 6382 resistance so we're getting real tight we're looking for a clear break if we were still trading right now this would be a beautiful setup to trade off of we would either play the bear break or the bull break depending the tighter we get the more likely we get follow through when that break does occur 
I did not trade CGC today. My attention was all on ACB. Gap up open. Rumors of talks with Coca-Cola. They were on television today. I forget which channel, but uh, the representative, I forget his name. It wasn't Cam. He was drank a Dasani at the end of the day or end of the uh, video, and that is owned by Coca-Cola. Who knows? It's just rumors. The daily chart is an indecision candlestick. So they are rumors that are unconfirmed. We have to assume that when we see that big of a gap up open on a lack of any concrete news, people are going to take profit. That being said, I did enter first thing on this bull move and I did get a good trade off of it and, and it made my week essentially. So from that point on, I traded extra cautiously, but I did make an entry on ACBFF at the open. I did a limit order significantly higher than where the price was. I didn't want to just do a market order because sometimes on these OTC exchanges, if the price is really running, it can give you horrible fills. So let's say, you know, I start my market order buy at 768 and it can fill me at 768, 69, 70, 71, 72, all the way up if the price is really running. In this instance, I got a great fill because my large position filled all of it at 668 right at the open. And next thing you know, we're trading up in the seven, or I should say in the, yeah, it was seven. It filled me at 768. I'm just getting a recap here. Filled me at 768, just like that. We were up in the 780s and 790s. So I made my entry and I took my profit in the 780s and 790s, slowly scaling out. I took a third profit initially to give me more wiggle room. At that point, you give me 20 cents and I take a third of my profit. I know I'm not going to lose on that trade. And worst case scenario, I'll, I'll exit with a small, uh, small win. So then I had two thirds of my position. I saw the bull slow down a little bit. I saw a rejection from $8 psychological resistance on ACBFF. I took more profit on that rejection. And then I took the final third of my profit as it faded back towards my entry point. And again, at that point, it was a significant enough gain that it locked in a week maker for me. A week maker for me is different than the next person. It, it varies for everybody, but it was a solid number. For some people, it's percentages. For some people, it's dollar numbers. For me, I use dollar numbers these days, but I increase with my position sizes on what that dollar number is for me as my account increases as well. So I loved the fact that I could take that profit and know that my day was set. And then from that point on, it's extremely comfortable trading because I don't force anything. I wait for all the trades to come to me. I could not make another trade for the rest of the day and I'm perfectly fine. And that's the way that the day ended up playing out. I did make another trade. I went and traded Amazon for a while, then came back to ACB on the $10 resistance break. For this trade, when you have a very clear wall at 10 psychological resistance and it just keeps refilling, it actually wasn't refilling, but it was just a huge wall, 600,000 shares and there was another 100,000 at 999. So I was in a position at that point on this bull break when we broke above 980, I made an entry and made a quick flip and I took my profit under $10. Under that wall of resistance, I took it maybe at 998, 997 or so. And the reason I do that is what I call, that's uh, taking insurance play. I lock in my small profit and I say to myself, all right, we're likely to reject initially from this big wall of resistance. If we break the wall of resistance, I'll just buy in on that bull break and be extremely confident that we're going to get a little bit of follow through. So it's the difference between holding my position and giving myself the potential of a clear rejection from resistance and a pullback. And then I sell into weakness or I sell into strength just before that resistance. I patiently wait and then I rebuy if that resistance breaks, knowing there will be follow through. If I don't do that play, I don't know that there's going to be follow through and I subject myself to giving back my gains. So at that point, as I saw the wall start to get chipped away at $10, I uh, went from you know 500,000 to 400,000 and then it moved really quickly. But as soon as I saw it start to getting chipped away and there was also news that we, they were coming on TV and there's always a, a usual you know, buy the rumor coming on TV and then sell when the company is on TV. That That's an often a play on CNBC. So knowing that that catalyst was looming as well made me confident to buy into that wall. So I don't wait for the resistance to break and then buy in because then stop buys are going to trigger and I'm going to be chasing with a bunch of people. I want to be in before the break occurs. So I wait until I'm confident that the wall is going to fall. I made a large position entry. It was 66% larger than my initial daily entry on the gap up open. So I went in much heavier and all of my orders filled before the $10 wall broke and then right after the $10 wall broke. And again, I waited until it started to get chipped away. I knew that the TV segment was coming up. Those were reasons that I made my entry before the resistance broke just as it was starting to break. From there, because I was in heavy, I in instantly started taking profit. And from that point on, uh, we moved about eight, nine cents on ACBFF. And again, it was just a, another really solid trade. 
locked in that profit and then exited on when we started to pull back here. Once they did come on the TV and the segment started going, I exited and just locked in the profit again. So just staying very agile. And I was going to try and swing some ACB. We saw some weakness at the end of the day. I'm all cash into tomorrow and we'll look to do it all over again. But as far as ACB stands, the hourly time frame, we're looking at the high of the bull reaction initially, the low of the pullback on the daily. And again, correlation to CGC profit taking definitely led to profit taking out of the open on ACB as well. We set our lower high and now we're in a tightening range. So we've got, let's see, our support levels on the 15 minute time frame. Key level 993, 987 with resistance of 1016 and 10, let's see, the high of the day, 1042. So tight range on ACB to be watching. APH, daily time frame looking like that lower high may be set, but we have to lose the hourly higher low pattern to be confident. Key support 1944, if we break that level, it's a double low. Break 1944 and we're confident that our daily lower high has been set. We're going to pull back and look to form a higher low compared to 1576. And it, it is an equilibrium here as well to a certain degree. So let's look at it on the 15 minute time frame, just like we did CGC. And what we have is our high of the day, low of the day, lower high, higher low, lower high. And we're just barely holding that higher low, much closer to a bear break than CGC is. Although CGC after hours right now is down about 10, 20 cents or so. So if we break these equilibriums bearish, the odds that our daily lower highs have been set will increase and we'll be looking for the tightening daily ranges to play out. Cron on the daily, a much weaker bounce. We didn't break the high of Friday on Cron. That's a red flag. And we could see that, remember in yesterday's video or the last video that I did, where we could see that the bounce was weak because we did not break to a higher high. It was one of the weaker bounces on the hourly time frame, ACB and APH broke to higher highs. CGC was on the verge of breaking to a higher high. Cron was not. And we stayed within that pattern because of that. So we had the clues to know who's stronger and who is weaker. And that followed through, at least in the instance of Cron and certainly in ACB, where we have our high, low, lower, or low, high, higher, low, lower, high. And we're now looking down at support of 1006 and 981 with resistance 1030, 1048, and then 1070. So it's still in the, the tightening range that we saw established between the high of Friday and the low of consolidation. So pretty much just sideways trading for Cron today. And nice to see that weakness comparatively to the other names play out today. And that's an instance, you know, who do I play? Which name am I looking at? I'm not going to choose the name that's weaker. If I'm looking bullish, I'm going to choose the names that are stronger. TLRY, astounding still. But a double top, 127.27, we rejected at 126.10. So it is a lower high. If we lose the hourly higher low pattern, we're going to look for the daily equilibrium to play out. 115.50 is the key support in the short term. If we break that level, we're looking for a higher low on the daily compared to 97. So same as everybody else, but the bulls are in a much stronger position overall. So if we do see the daily lower highs confirmed on these individual names, Tomorrow, with losses of hourly higher lows, we're going to look for TLRY to pull back towards that 115 support and potentially give us a daily equilibrium here as well. I am not interested in playing TLRY bearish unless the entire sector looks like it's going to break bearish. Then I'll look at TLRY puts. Until then, I'm not stepping in front of this speeding train of bulls. Let's see if we get an hourly tightening pattern. I should say a daily tightening pattern like we're looking for on these other names. N was very strange today. Clear bear break to start today. We had a gap down open. We had a quick flush down and then bulls bought the dip into the end of the day. And it was notable because it's not on huge bull volume. Look at the volume for the bears the last few days. And then look at this bull volume, which saw a huge move between the low of the day and the high of the day. We went from 234 up to 307. So essentially we went, let's see, 46 cents, 54 cents. We went 20%, no more than that, a lot of percent. We went about 25% from the low of the day to the high. And the fact that it happened without a ton of bull volume is very notable. We broke the lower highs on the hourly. Now the bulls need an hourly higher low and higher high to confirm the trend change. And look at this volume at the end of the day there. It came out of nowhere where the bulls had a nice little uptrend, but it wasn't anything special. And then we went from 276 to 307 in the blink of an eye in about 30 minutes which would be a really long blink, and you should probably go to a doctor if that's how long it takes to blink. But you get my point. 
comedy derailing my thoughts. So we've got N on the hourly looking for a higher low to form. Again, very notable buying of the dip. It almost looked like I had to look for news. You know, is there news out with this volume and couldn't find anything. So short-term support is 293. And if that level breaks, there's a lack of support because of how hard we ran up. But interested to watch to see how N trades tomorrow with this unusual action. And N is one of those ones that's very clearly breaking the correlation with all these other names that are tightening up on the daily time frame. Yes, it is still weak compared to where these other names are. We did not break the high of Friday, but it was just interesting to see those bulls show up when we weren't really seeing that happen in the rest of the sector. So resistance is going to be 307 and 320, still anticipating a daily lower high to form here as well, and a tightening range on N. It's just coming from a different point. OGI, same as everybody else, watching for a daily lower high compared to 790. If we lose the hourly higher low, you know the deal. 715 is that hourly higher low, and we are in a tightening range here as well. There's 715. We zoom into the 15 minute time frame. High of the day, low of the day, lower high, higher low, double top almost, 736, 737. And now the bulls have to hold 715. So it's a tight 15 minute time frame, just like CGC, just like APH. And we're looking for a break tomorrow morning. And we'll wrap it up with TRST. Same thing on the daily, looking for a lower high compared to 1293. If we lose the hourly higher lows, you know the deal. The last clear hourly higher low is 1067. So we don't have a clear level from that point. So we can pull back here and still maintain a higher low above 1067. And resistance is up at 1152 and 1165. So as we head into tomorrow, my game plan is remain cautious as a bull because I'm anticipating a daily lower high and we're getting up towards those levels. And the bulls are looking a little bit tired from their bounce from Friday all day following through into the gap up open today. I'm going to have to see bull breaks of these tight, patterns in order to have confidence that the bulls could see some continuation tomorrow if we see bear breaks i either look for bearish trades or i patiently wait for signs that a daily higher low is going to be found the signs that the daily higher low is found are when the hourly trend changes back to the bulls we say all right our daily higher low is formed we're looking for tightening daily ranges into the end of this week and we'll see if that's how it ends up playing out and again, my game plan will shift absolutely if I see signs and little clues, whether it is in volume or price action, that change the most likely scenario. But as of right now, anticipating the daily lower highs to be set as the most likely scenario, so my game plans will revolve around that. I appreciate you watching. I'm going to put at the end of these videos some Iceland content. Usually I do it at the end of the crypto videos in terms of just speaking some thoughts and doing good things and messages about the life and the world but i'll start doing that in here as well and this iceland video is going to be right when we landed and i didn't add any audio or anything to it i'm just going to let you hear the wind that was howling because iceland is definitely known for its pretty brutal weather at times and we went into the trip for eight days and the weather report said rain every day and we were pretty bummed and the first day started with a stiff wind and rain and then spoiler is that the weather cleared up beautifully for the rest of the week but here we are going to Blue Lagoon, it's a really awesome uh, hot spring. Definitely developed. I'm certainly one to go out into the middle of nature for my hot springs. Hiking up eight miles in Colorado to Conundrum Hot Springs is one of my favorite places I've ever been. And that is very undeveloped. But this one, when you do an overnight flight and you land at six in the morning, seven in the morning, which back at your time is four in the morning and you're completely exhausted, it's good to get pampered every now and again. So you go into the Blue Lagoon and they've got a swim up bar and they've got a, a swim up spot where you put you know silica and algae masks on and you just drink a beer and float in this wonderful place and then you go into a fancy restaurant and you can wear your robe in the fancy restaurant and definitely felt out of place doing that but it was fun and then we went to an airbnb right on the water and there was a hot tub and i love hot tubs and and bathing in water and sitting and thinking about life in the universe and uh, this one was great because oftentimes you go to an Airbnb or a hotel and you think, man, there's been 100 people in here before me and this is murky, chlorinated, gross water. But here in Iceland, there was a spigot like your hose just down your house coming out of the, the wall there, but it's with geothermal water. So it's literally hot water and it's fresh water every time. So you drain the hot tub when you're done with it and when you want to get in, you fill it up for an hour, an hour and a half and you're sitting outside looking at the ocean and there was a nice sprinkle to keep us cool. And that was pretty much our intro to Iceland day one before we got into our travels. 
So hope you enjoy it and we'll be back tomorrow with some follow through. Have a good night.